Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You'd think that Simon Peter and the other disciples would have been better fishermen. Simon Peter, at least. His livelihood was as a fisherman before Jesus called him to follow Jesus in his ministry. But they can't catch a fish to save their lives. It's going to take Jesus showing up before they will ever find the results that they seek. When Jesus arrives on the beach today, he sees his frustrated disciples doing very poor work in the world. It seems like they can't do anything quite right by themselves. Not even the things that they're supposed to be good at. However, as soon as they start listening to Jesus and applying what he tells them, The results of their effort are astounding, so astounding that they can barely bring their catch to shore. The disciples' effort needed Jesus' expertise. By themselves, they were not even able to put breakfast on their plates. And like the first disciples, we might not always know what the right thing to do is, but Jesus does, and we would be wise to listen to what Jesus would do. Even if it sounds like something so foolish or confusing as simply dipping our fishing nets into the water on the other side of the boat, there's a reason that Jesus tells us how to operate in this world, and it is for the benefit of us all. Listening to Jesus brings the results in life that will astound us. The body of Jesus Christ the church, is given the holy privilege to be Jesus' hands and feet in this world. Commissioned and equipped by him, we are sent for the sake of the world. Asked by God, like Jesus Christ, to submit to God's will and bring about the kingdom of God on earth. And as God's people and community, the church needs to always follow the example of Jesus Christ. We are to listen to him, even when it doesn't quite make sense to us, like it didn't with the disciples today and dipping their nets just on the other side of the boat. Around the turn of the 19th century in North America, there was a movement in the churches known as the social gospel. And you're more familiar with it than you might assume. The idea of what would Jesus do was the guiding principle. I know you've seen the bracelets with WWJD on them. That's what it stands for. What would Jesus do? As a reminder on their wrists, many people still wear these bracelets so that whenever they find themselves in a quandary, not knowing what to do or facing an ethical dilemma, they can ask, what would Jesus do? And then respond faithfully. The idea is that what we want think we need or what we think we should do is not always the best option or the right choice. Our sinfulness gets in the way and wants us to serve ourselves before taking care of anybody else. In our sinfulness, we are often tempted to act in ways that Jesus Christ never would. The social gospel helps us to remember that as his disciples, we are supposed to truly be Jesus Christ's presence in the world and that those who interact with us interact with Jesus himself. We are cautioned with the four letters of WWJD to remember who we are representing. Jesus Christ himself for the people of this world who need him. In the church, we are to make decisions not based on our own personal desires, but with our community, the body of Christ himself as our focus. We set aside our own needs and desires for others, as Jesus did in his earthly ministry. Sure, we might not always know what to do. We might even fight over it sometimes, like the first disciples did. But, and this is the good news, we will get it right by listening to the word of God, by applying the gospel to the life of the church. And our personal lives are not free from this responsibility either. In our daily lives, we are to interact as Jesus' personal emissaries to the people in the world. We are given a great responsibility as Christians 
and a wonderful delight to bring the ways of the kingdom of God to this hurting planet. WWJD, what would Jesus do? This is to guide every decision we find ourselves making, and it transforms not only the rest of the world, but also us in this spiritual practice. As Jesus said in his Sermon on the Mount, strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, everything you need, will be given to you as well. Like the disciples on the boat fishing today, our entire lives, our livelihood itself, is better when we listen to Jesus. Now I'll admit that it's hard to know what to do sometimes. I myself have fallen into temptation and done what pleased me, even hurting others. When I was a child, I remember one time that I got caught doing this, not doing what I knew Jesus would have done. I'd stolen candy, got busted, and lied about it. Every time we went to my parents' friend's house, Brian and Joe Lynn's, Joe Lynn would let my brother and I have one piece of hard candy from the hug jar. When we ran to the front door, parents with us, of course, we would give Joe Lynn a big hug and she'd say, all right, one piece from the hug jar, but only one. Well, one time I decided, knowing that we were headed over to Brian and Joe Lynn's, that I was going to bring my popple, my stuffed animal with me. I was pretty young then, and my green popple was one of my favorite toys because it had sort of a secret pocket in the back that you could fold the stuffed animal into and turn it into a ball. In some way, it was sort of like the stuffed animal of the Transformer toys. Anyways, I brought that toy with me one time and filled the pocket up with candy from the hug jar while the night was going on. I still remember creeping up the first set of stairs where the stand was with the candy. My little brother was the lookout. Following Jesus a little better than I wanted to, he tried to convince me that this was a poor decision. But in my sugar addiction, I was way past caring about ethics. It only took a few seconds, and the candy, the full candy jar was near empty. Filled to the brim earlier that evening when we had arrived and received our honest piece of candy. Only a few minutes later, my brother and I were called into the kitchen for questioning. The near-empty glass jar was on the counter. I'm sure that the guilt was pasted all over both of our faces. My brother sucked into my sin. When asked where the candy went, I played dumb. I admitted that we'd eaten more than we should have, but there was no way we could have eaten that much candy. They knew we had more stashed somewhere. My father asked to inspect my popple probably wondering in the first place why I'd brought it. His detective mind put two and two together. The candy was poured out on the table. Our guilt was evident. Our sin was exposed. My selfishness in not acting like I had learned in church had caused me harm. In shame, we admitted to what had happened. In front of our parents, we put the candy back into the glass jar and then had to go put it back in its place on the turn of the staircase. We were told that we weren't going to be able to have access to the hug jar the next few times we came over. But what really hurt the most was the disappointment that we saw on our parents' faces. My negative actions hurt not only me, but also my brother and my whole family. I share this story not because I'm proud of it, but because it's one of those foundational stories in my life. When I learned that doing the right thing really is the best option. It's one of the many times that I learned that I should always be asking myself what my faith calls me to do in my action. It's probably the most defining moment where I realize that doing what Jesus would have me do is truly for my own good. I might not have done the right thing. But part of that may be because I never asked myself then, what would Jesus do? Following Jesus, like he requires of us us in the gospel today, is not always easy. We sometimes want to do our own thing. 
we sometimes want to think about ourselves first. And we think that going back to our old ways is going to help us get ahead in life sometimes. That this whole Christianity thing sounds like a good idea on Sunday morning. That the rest of the week, it doesn't really make that much sense. The disciples in their fishing thought this too. They were wrong. Jesus challenges us today to follow him. He knows that it's going to be difficult at times. We are all going to be tempted to bring our popple to the party and seek selfish gain. He knows that we've got our own earthly agendas and only want to follow him when it's easy. Peter did that too, when he denied Jesus all those times, those times before the cock crowed. It wasn't as easy as he wanted, and so he pretended that he didn't even know Jesus. In the story today, Jesus finds Peter and lets him make it up. Peter denied Jesus three times, and today Peter is offered the opportunity to accept Jesus three times and express his true love and fidelity to the Lord. Each time Jesus saying that if you love me, then feed my sheep. That love of Jesus is not as much of a feeling as it is an action for others. Jesus gives us a lot of chances, and Peter and the rest of the disciples now get to be Jesus' presence in taking care of the sheep, all the people that God loves. We all are called and given the opportunity by Jesus Christ to feed his sheep. In our love for Jesus and our sorrow for not listening before, we now demonstrate our love to him by loving those that he loves. The disciples are blessed to have Jesus show up to greet us, to come and offer an opportunity to respond in real action to our love of him. And we might be a little jealous of this with the first disciples, wanting to see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this world, in the flesh too. But we must realize, but what we must realize is that we can. And even that Jesus tells us exactly how to do so. He's given us a map telling us in the light of the day of our judgment of how we asked ourselves, what would Jesus do? He says, the righteous will answer him. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the map. Where is Jesus? Jesus is the poor, hungry and thirsty people starving in the desert with Satan trying to test him. Jesus is the stranger seeking asylum, like he was as a baby running to Egypt as Herod sought to kill all the newborn babies. Jesus is the homeless person, Jesus is all homeless persons who are struggling with housing insecurities, a lack of clean clothes, addiction, and mental health issues. Jesus is the sick person that nobody wants to go around, the pariahs in life who cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus sits today in prison, judged and with nobody to come visit him. Like in the gospel today, Jesus continues to show himself to his disciples, to you and to me, offering us many opportunities, like with Peter, to make up for our selfish past actions where the consideration of what would Jesus do never even crossed our minds. Have faith that Jesus will always come and show us the way, the way of our transgressions, and then too, offer us the new way to live the good life in him. Pray for it for your own lives and for the lives of all people. Look for him where you least expect him to be, but where he promised us that he would be. Like the disciples in the gospel story today, it might take us a moment to realize his presence with us, that he is and always will be with us. Jesus will always show up, bringing us reason to celebrate and joining him in his work in this world, 
This world that so desperately needs to realize that Jesus' way, whether it's with catching fish or anything else, his way is what this world truly needs. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Remember this, because it will be valuable to you this week in your life. You might not always know what the right thing to do is, but Jesus does. And we would be wise to do what Jesus would do. We would be wise to listen to Jesus when he says, follow me. We would be wise to take advantage of this blessing and opportunity to be his hands and feet in this world for those who need to be fed. For the gospel promises us today that listening to Jesus brings the results in life that will astound us all. Amen.